Hey guys, today I'm doing a power jack replacement on an MSI Stealth laptop. We do this repair service for $69 parts and labor at PCRepairHelp.net. And as you can see here, this has been a, a hack job done by somebody who didn't know what they were doing. It was actually a, a big name competitor um, that, I, that will remain nameless. But you always have to be careful about who you get to do your repair work and these laptop jacks are no are no different than anything else. And the first thing we're going to do here is add some flux to the solder points. And this is going to help loosen everything up, get that jack flowing. And after I've added the flux, I'm going to add some solder to these solder points to get this through hole heated up nicely. Nothing has been damaged, it's just the connection is went bad again very quickly. I think it worked for a month or two and then the connection went bad again. So I'm going to, going to replace the DC jack properly here. And I'm just getting all that flux and solder inside that through hole so it'll come out nicely. And I use a Chemtronics desoldering braid. I'll leave a link in the description on where to get that if you need it. But this solder braid is really good at sucking up that solder once you've added the flux and the and the new solder to the hole. So that you just want to hold it over that through hole there and kind of work its way down. When enough solder has gone through that braid, you can just keep moving it down. And it's the same process for each one of these holes here. You want to cut off that braid when too much gets on there. You don't want that hot solder wick to touch any of the components next to the, the jack. There's not much going on near the jack on this one, so it's not as much of a concern, but... And I'm just trying to get as much of this solder out as possible with this braid. These MSI Stealth ones that are soldered are usually pretty, relatively on the easier side to get desoldered. And the temperature for my soldering iron is about around 700 degrees. I'm using a Hako FX Triple Eight D. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get that each one of those through holes from all four angles. It's kind of like a square. And I want to put that desoldering braid on each sides of that square and just make sure that I'm very thorough about getting all the solder out of it. And once you know you, you know you have all the solder out when nothing is coming up into the braid anymore. And you can kind of see that little gap between the pin and the hole. And so now I'm taking a uh, pliers here and I'm just checking how loose the jack is. Um, when you've done enough desoldering the jack will come out really easily. Um, it should kind of just you know fall out for the most part. It's going to need a little bit of force to get it out but um, you can see there that it's nice and loose. 
so I'm kind of just bending it, barely touching it, and it's just falling out of the, the through holes there. So, And so there it goes. You can see that jack has been removed. And it's time to clean this thing up and install a new one. So after I get the jack removed on any laptop, I like to go back with my soldering braid over those through holes and just remove any existing solder that's still there. It's going to make for a nice clean flow when we put the new jack on. So now I'm taking some of my 99% alcohol and I'm going to clean all the flux off the board. And as you can see, nothing was damaged by that repair. It just wasn't very good. So the through holes are looking great there. Um, fortunately, nothing was damaged by the technician who doesn't do a very good job in that case. So now I'm going to put the new jack in, and I like to put something underneath these jacks so they don't fall through while you're soldering. Um, I just use a little handle of a pliers here, and that'll just keep it flush and level with the board when you're trying to solder so that thing doesn't fall back through. And the solder that I'm using has a decent amount of flux in it, so I don't really need to add any flux to the the through holes now. Sometimes I do that depending on the size of the hole, but these are pretty decent sized holes and don't really need any flux for it to flow through there properly. So I'm just going to make sure it's nice and flowing through each one of these holes. And kind of like the desoldering process of having it done on each side. I like to try to do that when I'm soldering it. Put that iron on each side just to make sure it's flowed through very well. And you can just hold that iron on the through hole a little bit extra just to make sure that that solder is going all the way through to the other side. And this is what I'm doing here. And in this case, I saw I didn't like the way that it was flowing through, so I wanted to add a little bit of flux to try to get that to go through that through hole better, just to make sure that it's going all the way through to the other side for a good solid connection that will last. And so again, I'm taking the 99% alcohol, and I'm going to clean up all the remaining flux that was there from the soldering. And here we go, a much better result than what was there before. The solder's nice and flowed through, and you can, this thing's going to be good to go. Thanks for watching guys, take care.